this is Big Rob's Little Podcast, installment number one into my bi-weekly podcast. I am your host, Robbie Dills, and I'm here today with a very special guest of mine who uh, greatly accepted to take the time out of his busy lifestyle to be on the podcast. And uh, this guy is known as um, not only my best friend, but uh, he is an NWX superstar, and that is... Dylan Coro. So, uh, Dylan, uh, first of all, people can't see it anyways, but I'm going to give you a handshake. Cool. I want to thank you for greatly, you know, accepting to do this uh, podcast. Greatly accepting to do this while eating pizza. Yeah, Mario's Place Pizza went well and kind of, you know, one of the best places to go. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, we're here. Uh, that sound you just heard was the box kind of like the lid going over, but, um, Anyways, we'll get right into it. Uh, I'm going to be talking myself, first of all, about the uh, NFL and uh, how greatly or how deeply upset I am of the fact that Green Bay isn't moving on. They lost to Atlanta and now the Super Bowl um, is New England Patriots, I'm guessing their second year in a row being in the Super Bowl. Uh, going against the Atlanta Falcons, who I'm pretty sure haven't even had any uh, Super Bowl experience. Um, you know, it's either go with the team, you know, that, uh, beat the Packers or go with the team that, uh, won the Super Bowl last year due to deflate gate and all that stuff with all that conspiracy. Um, you know, I'm kind of upset that the Falcons beat the Packers, so I think I'm going to go with uh, Tom Brady and the Patriots. Um, actually, I'll ask Dylan for his input, even though I don't really have that down. Like, who do you think, even though I know you're not really, like, keeping up with all the football? Yeah, stuff, but... and one of the least sports that I pay attention to is football. Yeah. And I don't pay attention to it much, considering that I'm just like, you know what, my favorite team is Buffalo Bills, yet that's, like, one of the worst teams well, I'll just say I just say that so that I have a favorite. <clears throat> I totally understand that. My girlfriend's actually a Buffalo Bills fan, so we kind of have a uh, rivalry kind of thing going on, especially with also our hockey teams because she's a Buffalo Sabres fan and I'm a Philadelphia Flyers fan. Boo! I mean, what? <laughs> <sighs> I know I'm coming into Pittsburgh Penguins territory, so you know rivalry of Philadelphia or not, not rivalry of Pennsylvania. Uh, but if you had to choose, Green or uh, Atlanta or New England, just for the sake of saying, or obviously not really caring, to be honest, because, you know, football, like you Patriots. said. Patriots. Patriots, all right. So, uh, next topic of discussion, uh, moving right along here with our podcast. Well, we are going to be talking about WWE. Uh, not only that, but Royal Rumble predictions slash a preview of what's going down. So, I know for sure on the pre-show, uh, there's a six-women tag match. It is Becky Lynch, um, Nikki Bella, and um, Naomi going up against, I believe it is uh, Alexa Bliss. <sighs> Natalia and I think Mickey James? Um, Mickey James on the pre-show, and she just returned. I know, like I w I wasn't watching SmackDown last week when they announced it because <clears throat> I was on a two-day tour. Yeah, speaking of which, we'll get into that a little later on too. Um, but yeah, like I I'm kind of you know I've been a Nikki Bella fan for quite a while, but, like, now it's, like, Alexa Bliss is, like, one of my favorite SmackDown divas, or SmackDown women, uh, as they are now known as, uh, due to the whole women's revolution and stuff like that, um, but, yeah, I'm predicting Alexa Bliss, Natalia, and Mickey James winning that match, um, although I do like the feud and how, like, uh, Nikki Bella and Natalia fought in, like, the, uh, that, like concession kind of stand thing or whatever. Well, not really concession, but more merchandise table and stuff like that. Got all like taken down. Nikki Bella slapped one of the, I guess, the security guys or whatever, which is funny. Um, but yeah, moving right along. Another pre-show match. Um, the tag team championship for the Raw brand. Um, 
I believe that is Cesaro and Sheamus, the current Raw Tag Champs, going against Gallows and Anderson. And there is two referees assigned, so therefore no shenanigans can take place. You know, being that there's two refs, you know, they can see, like, one on the outside saying, oh, like, okay, this is going to be disqualification or whatever. Like, I don't know. There's going to be some sort of shenanigans, I would think, because, well, um, I'm also kind of taking a theory that I'm took from Aftermath, like the uh, WWE talk show kind of thing, every Tuesday before SmackDown um, on Sportsnet 360 here in Canada. But, um, yeah, Nug was saying, like, you know, he, there's going to be some shenanigans uh, for sure. But, uh, I don't know, I think this is going to be Gallus and Anderson's time. And uh, speaking of which, I don't think I got your prediction for the, uh, the women's tag match, Dylan, so... Baby faces. Baby faces. All right, so that's uh, Nikki Bella and Becky Lynch and Naomi. Don't Sasha and Nia Jax have something on pre-show also? I believe so, yeah. I think there's also a match between Nia and Sasha. Um, so pretty much there's not going to be like a women's, women's match, match on the main card. Except uh, Charlotte, Charlotte and Bailey. Bailey yeah. Um, and then for, like I said, the uh, Raw Tag Titles. Gallus and Anderson are the current tag champs, Sheamus and Cesaro. Wait, did you say Gallows and... Anderson. I thought the, it was reversed. The decision was reversed. What do you mean? I thought, like, the decision was... Didn't, like, one of the refs got knocked down and then they switched the decision by DQ? Yeah. Therefore, New Day would retain. Oh, wait, no, what? No, like, it's Sheamus and Cesaro that are the tag champs right now, right? You just said that Anderson and Gallows were the tag champs. Did I? No, I said Gallows and Anderson versus the current tag champs. Cesaro uh, I thought champs. you said... No, but... Uh, but anyways, current tag champs are going over. Okay, so... I don't know, I'm just randomly thinking... Yeah. So each of us obviously are on like two different sides here for our predictions so far. Um, now I believe we get to the main card, which will be pretty exciting to watch, uh, considering I'll be having yourself and uh, another one of our friends, Matthew Daniluk, uh, over at my place for the Royal Rumble. So pretty solid. Um, Let's see, next match here, probably going to talk about... Let's let's start with the Cruiserweight division, with the Cruiserweight Championship match between the current champion, Rich Swan going up against the self-proclaimed King of the Cruiserweights, Neville, and I no, think no, this... No. Is, it's not self-proclaimed. It is the yes, King it is. of the Cruiserweights. Definitely. Um, Will, I'm, unfortunately, not win the Royal Rumble this Sunday. <laughs> well, no, obviously not. But I'm hoping that he does win the Cruiserweight Championship, so that is my prediction for sure. Uh, I believe he is going to be the Cruiserweight Champion. And so, uh, Dylan's just finishing up his pizza here, so... Um, but yeah, your prediction is probably the same as mine. Cruiserweight Champion Neville, eh? No. No? That's why I said the King of the Cruiserweights will not win. At the Royal Rumble. Okay. Swan is retaining. Okay. So again, we're on separate sides here. Um, maybe somewhere down the line in the predictions will come across the same prediction, but, um, uh, let's see here. Talk about the women. We have Bailey versus the current Raw Women's Champion, Charlotte Flair. Charlotte is undefeated at pay-per-views. I think it's 15 and other saying for defending her title. Um, I, I think it's going to be a 16 and 0. Is this, yep. is, yeah, this is where we agree on something for once. Um, I'm guessing Dylan's just looking up uh, the matches that are happening on your game, game, right? That's what I'm so, looking up. At least I don't have to, you know, stutter and wait, be like, oh, okay, this match is happening, or the, this match, no. Um, okay, so, yeah, pre-show, mm -hmm. we're already talking about Sasha and I and that. Um, King of the Cruiserweights. Yeah. So we Charlotte are in that. Rotten. So it's a universal championship match. Ooh. No disqualification now. Where Chris Jericho will be suspended in Shark Cage above the ring. It's going to be a, a pretty interesting match. Um, 
I've heard so many different theories, to be honest. Um, uh, on Aftermath, they were saying, oh, like, shenanigans might happen where, like, I guess, you know, Chris Jericho will, like, try and drop something down to help out Kevin Owens, but then, you know, it backfiring and then having, like, Roman win. But, like, no, like, I definitely see KO retaining the title, for sure. That's my prediction. Kevin Owens, Kevin <coughs> Owens. is retaining the yes. championship. Um, I want to see, well, I'll talk about, like, my theory for the Rumble afterwards, but uh, it's been, like, you know, teased so much, uh, basically, on Raw. Anyways, there's a AJ Styles versus John Cena WWE Championship. I do not want to see John Cena tie Ric Flair. My prediction, AJ Styles does retain. This one's hard because, like, okay, so one minute. Is, like, Dean Ambrose and that not facing each other? Is that what's going on? No IC title match at the Rumble? That's what I'm looking at on mm-hmm. Wikipedia. Yeah. What the hell? Um, for some reason, because that we I predicted that there aren't going to be any, like, title changes. As far as I can think of right now, my official thoughts always happen on the Sunday. Yeah, exactly. So, maybe I will later on think that the club will actually take the tag titles. Mm-hmm. But, uh... That's usually how I am now, too. Um, honest, but... For some reason, I'm just thinking that because this is third time the charm... For AJ Styles versus John Cena, that John Cena will take the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. Shout out to Matt Cuff. John Cena's gonna bury AJ Styles. Oh, God. You know, I don't know. Um, that's it for that. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all the matches. Oh, no, we got the Royal, the Royal Rumble. Rumble match itself. Sorry. Ooh. Trying to get ahead of myself, here, but uh, to to all the fans who are gonna th- who are thinking either Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, or Undertaker, yep. you're all wrong because the only reason they're in the Rumble is to make cash. Exactly, it's um, to make money so that all the fans think that they're the favorites to win. The fact is, is that Chris Jericho is yes. indeed winning the Royal Rumble. Yes, that, that that's my prediction. Chris that is Jericho. also mine. Chris Jericho is winning the Rumble. Undertaker doesn't need it because Undertaker is bigger than the WWE itself. Exactly. He's the Brock Lesnar is bigger than the WWE itself. Goldberg's bigger than the WWE itself. Yeah. They they don't need a Rumble win to keep relevance. That is that is completely true. I agree with you on that one. Um, and the fact that uh, who else could be a favorite to win? Again. I don't know. Well, if anything, we can talk returns or, you know, surprise entrance or NXT call-ups, if any. But if, if Finn Balor does return, he's going to win the Rumble. Yeah. Um, if he doesn't, then it's Jericho. Well, he's got one more month left before he's supposed to come back in Which reality. Is, yeah. So, you know, he could pull a John Cena and, like, recover. Like, well, no, I don't think so. But um, if we do see Balor, then yes, like... Then he'll win, and then he'll go after Owens and set up Universal Championship match for... Because, you know, Balor never lost the Universal title. He had to unfortunately give it up due to injury. Suffered uh, during the match between Rollins and Balor. Um, but yeah, uh, any NXT or um, other returns that you may think of. Like... I'm actually glad that Kurt Angle is being inducted into the Hall of Fame. I do not, although, see him coming into the Royal Rumble. But if it does happen, then I'll be like marking out huge. Like I know you would too, but like also you. I'm gonna mark out of Eugene's in the Rumble. Yes, (laughs) hashtag Eugene for Royal Rumble 2017. Hey, anything can happen in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Which, by the way, also NXT Takeover. Tomorrow, San Antonio, 8 o'clock on the network here in Canada. Or, well, basically anywhere. Uh, 8 o'clock Eastern. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's... Um, definitely do not think the revival is coming till like sometime later down the road. Because, well... If it's going to be anyone, it's going to be Samoa Joe. Yeah, that's true. Nakamura later on once he loses... Well, if... 
he loses the battle, which I don't actually see him losing to Bobby Roode. Although, it would be glorious. What about, and I know this has been talked about, but I definitely do not see it happening, where Ty Dillinger, everyone's wanting him to come out as Entry number, number 10. 10 because of the perfect 10. Yeah, well. Uh, I don't know. Let's just put it this way. It's going to be a good event, hopefully. Uh, should live up to the hype because it's the Royal Rumble. It's one of the big four pay-per-views, so... Or, in this case, special events for WWE. Um, Alright, moving on. Uh, NWX. Basically, the company... Well, sub-company? No. Because you work for CWF, but in reality, CWF owns NWX. Um, I'm an independent professional. Wrestler. Exactly. You're, you're an independent... I work for whoever I want. Exactly. So, um... Let's see here. In reality, uh, I'm just saying they're like the company owns NWX to be honest. But anyway, so um, that's where I'm getting at. Uh, the main event, which I did not see happening, to be honest, when I like was you know first you know sitting there in the crowd and uh, Nolan Pink and Tyler Blaze came out because they were the two going at it for the title, uh, which Tyler Blaze is the champion um, at that time, of course. Um, so obviously, I didn't expect you, of all people, to come out because like we thought it was going to be you versus Adam Jeffrey originally, the uh, another one of the members from the team known as Youth Gone Wild, which uh, currently you have somewhat of a feud with at the moment. An ongoing type of feud. So, uh, so yeah, the main event of NWX uh, back on January twenty second. That is correct. Yep. Um, yourself versus, uh, I guess the number one contender as it may be, Nolan Pink versus Tyler Blaze, the champion. Uh, that match was actually uh, a great match to watch. Um, you know, there was, like, myself and my uncle and, obviously, my cousin who, uh, you know, I'm not going to really mention because of, uh, kind of a, you know, personal reason due to the fact that, uh, him and I got into an argument, but that's, uh, not needed to be talking about on here, or talked about on here. But anyway, so, um, yeah, we were cheering for you, and then you got people cheering for Nolan and booing the hell out of you. Um, first of all, I want to ask, how do you feel about that? Like, you got mixed reactions from the crowd, which obviously, you know, makes you kind of like a tweener. It, 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 no, it doesn't really make me a tweener. See, so that just makes you think, is John Cena a tweener because he gets cheered and booed? Well, no, I mean, like... Reigns a tweener because no, it's he like, gets cheered and booed during I know what a tweener is. Like, you're kind of in between of, like, a heel and a face uh, uh, kind of personality, I believe. Um, but no, that's not what I wanted to get to. Um, unfortunately, this was, like, your, what, second or third... No, this would be your third or fourth loss in a row now? Or... I don't know, to be honest with you. And so, basically, what had happened um, at the end of that match was you went on to give Nolan Pink an RKO out of nowhere. And for some time now, it's like, definitely you have had some frustration built up because due to the fact that, you know, Youth Gone Wild has been, like, a pain in your back, neck, whatever... Pain in the ass. Um, yeah, you know what? This is this is going to be, you know, a censor-free podcast. We can swear if we want to. Um, so, yeah, basically you had a little bit of an attitude change, but you also stopped yourself from continuing to attack Nolan afterwards, so you still have some good left in you. Um, I can't wait to see where this actually all unfolds uh, afterwards uh, at future NWX shows. But, um, do you have any comments on your attitude change, so to speak? Fact is, is that, <clears throat> is that Nolan Pink was at the wrong place at the wrong time. 
cool, he goes in to give me sportsmanship. I would have done the same thing. That's what I did. Yeah. I shook his hand. But my mind was in two places. One was being the nice guy that I am and uh, being the, the sport that I am, sportsmanship, and giving it to Nolan Pink. And then most of my mind was focused on Youth Gone Wild due to the fact that, you know, they keep screwing me in, in and out. Screwing me out of the title, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, and not only that, other people have uh, screwed me out of title opportunities. And uh, I just, you know, I just broke. I uh, My frustrations went out. Yeah. And uh, it just so happens that all my frustrations went out on Nolan Pink. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I found, I, I actually found that quite interesting. I, I had a feeling like this change in attitude was coming. Um, just didn't know when, but um, yeah. Um, another thing, uh, you just went like you just came back from a two day tour. Um, my girlfriend Shelby actually requested me to ask you this. In the words of Enzo Amore. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? All right. Well, I understand that uh, earlier this week you were diagnosed with a mild concussion due to the fact that you did have a match with some guy named Moondog Buddy, um, and he went to give you a bump. Well, this isn't actually where it started. It started with you having a six-man Royal Rumble match, um, but which, by the way, you guys can go watch that on YouTube on Dylan's channel. Uh, you just look up like Dylan Coros and you'll find all his matches um, from NWX and any other uh, match that he's been in, like with CWF and stuff like that. But um, started all with like three, basically, uh, what was it, hits to the head or something like that? Like three. I'm let's just face it, I hit my head off the ground many of times. Yeah, and then during that match with Moondog Buddy, this is where it actually like. Basically, kind of, you know... You know I, I, I was diagnosed uh, the night before that. Oh, okay. So after the rumble. After the rumble, you were diagnosed with a mild no, and then, concussion from what I heard. Yeah. And then... Okay, so this makes it worse then, is what you're saying to me, is that he gave you a bonsai drop. Uh, if for all those who don't know what the bonsai drop is, uh, Yokozuna uh, performed this finishing move where he either do it like in the middle of the ring or you bring your opponent to the corner and then you go onto the second rope and then just jump and sit on you. So Dylan, unfortunately, uh, I was told by him. I, I didn't, I, I was, you know, he's a big guy. He slammed it down and I didn't move on time. He hit, hit you hard. Yeah. And I was, yeah. Landed right on your head, which, um, I am sorry to hear that, to be honest with you. Like, you know, I know how uh, how hard it probably is on you because, like, now you have to take it easy in the ring uh, for a little while. Um, although I know this isn't gonna, you know, take you out of wrestling anytime soon. Like my concussion, like I know, like a lot of wrestlers, um, performers who have suffered from like concussions and stuff like that, but they still wrestle. Um, some actually may not due to the fact that they have retired, but, um, I guess, you know, what I'm trying to say is now we can move along with our Q and A segment. Um, before the Q and A starts, we're going back to NWX, okay, which, uh, it has been announced by NWX that at their next event called Valentine's Day Massacre on Saturday, February 11th, 2017. I'm surprised I said 17 because usually I say whatever the year was last year. 2016, yeah. I will finally get my hands on Adam Jeffrey in a one on one match. Good. As yes. been announced by the powers to be at NWX. So, speaking of which, if all of you who weren't there, um, it has been announced that Jesse Bieber takes over as GM in March, I believe it is, or something like that. Something like that. Um, so, and also Jesse Bieber has 50% control of what happens uh, over the fact that Prince Ali, who originally has 75% like ownership, um, now I guess only has 50 himself as well. 
I believe is how it's going down, but, um, all right, um, now I'm moving along to the Q&A segment. Um, first question off the top of my head that I know for sure someone commented on my post was, uh, Kristen asking me, what advice do you have to give to, uh, any basically, let's say, rookie starting out in the wrestling business? All right, so... I'm usually not the guy for advice. I'm not a good teacher. I'll admit that. But uh, if you are under the age of 18 and uh, you're still in school, blah, 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 like high school and that, uh, I say either do half and half and like focus on schoolwork and wrestling but obviously finish your work before you go to wrestling. Exactly. Or you do one or the other. It kind of sounds like crappy advice, like saying, like, oh, don't go to school, go to wrestling. But at the same time, education is more important. So if you are busy with school, do school before you come to wrestling. That is, <clears throat> that is you know, some good advice. Um... Okay, um, so yeah, basically Kristen was the only one to, uh, comment a question, so shout out to Kristen Zentridius for that. Um, now, some questions that, um, I may have come up with or may still come up with, um, what are your goals, uh, in wrestling? Like, what do you plan on, you know, officially, like, doing, like? After this feud with Youth Conrad, like, I know, like, you're definitely still, like, pushing for that title opportunity. Um, obviously, you've been brought down with certain things, like, I know, um, you had this feud with this guy who should not be named, uh, for personal reasons, I guess, but he threw a ball of fire in your eyes, and, uh, I'm assuming that he's no longer with the company since he hasn't shown up in, like, months and months now, so, like... Never know. Never know, but, um, and then, like, I, and, and, you know, for person, personally, I know, like, what, what, like, actually happened, um, so, of course, I won't mention it, but, uh, like, obviously, I'm, you know, proud that you're, like, you know, back in the ring after everything that's been on, like, going on and stuff, and, like, um, you know, doesn't matter whether you're a good guy, a bad guy, face or a heel. Um, you know, I'm still gonna cheer for you, even if you know, one day along the lines, you'll you'll you know pass me as I'm sitting in the crowd, and you'll be like, "Well, we got this guy right here. Uh, it's four eyes, no good guy right here. I don't know, like whatever. If you end up, you know." interacting with me in like a negative way, you know, I'll, I'll just, you know, take it as like an experience, like, you know, um, kind of just laugh it off and still cheer for you because, you know, uh, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, uh, I consider you basically a best friend to me. Well, you are my best friend, uh, other than, you know, my girlfriend being like, you know, the main thing and then like other people like Matthew and stuff like that, like, but no, like, you also, I have no siblings, no brothers or sisters, so basically I consider you as a brother to me, basically, because, well, um, we've known each other since daycare, and that, that's pretty special, I mean, knowing, like, that we didn't actually know we went to daycare together until, like, after you showed me the picture, which, by the way, do you still have that picture around somewhere? I don't know. Don't know, eh? One of the pictures where we were outside in, like, the playground area, man, brings back memories. Not really, but, um, anyways, I'm related to that. Um, so, yeah, like, what goals do you have? Make it successful in Ontario indie wrestling it will lead to indie bookings in the U.S., potentially leading to like ROH or something. That would be awesome. Uh I don't know about Japan. <laughs> I haven't gave a thought yet. Uh NXT. Yes. 
possibly the WWE. Yeah, man. Like, you never really know, actually. Like, you start, you have to, the thing, I, <clears throat> it's cool that people think about wanting to the, go to the WWE, but you, but I also have that realistic side. The fact is, is that not everyone goes to WWE. You gotta, like, think about where you're at first. Yeah. Not be like, oh, I'm gonna, my next goal is WWE. No. Realistically, you have to go up the ladder. Exactly. Look, right. at a, look at AJ Styles. AJ Styles had wrestled for 18 years and before he went to the WWE. Yeah. I was going to actually use that term, <coughs> climbing up the ladder, because, well, uh, it makes sense. Like, you can't, like, automatically just assume you'll be at the top. Like, no, you got to work your way up each rung. Uh, you may be stuck at, like, let's say the middle rung for a little bit, just until, you know, get that, like, next, like, push up the ladder kind of thing or whatever. Um, but, uh, anyways, um, I mean, during some of your tours that you've been on, uh, you have, like, won championships that obviously they didn't really, like, do you consider that they count towards your actual, like, career? Like, do you think, like, oh, I've, like, you know, won this championship, but then, like, in reality, like, um, wasn't actually considered? Are you referring to the imaginary title I won in the Royal Rumble match yeah. that I won? The, uh... I forget the name of something First Nations Championship. Yeah. Which I don't know. Like Well I, I, I never saying, I never physically got a belt. Okay. So then you're basically still uh still working your way for that first title run. Yeah. Which, you know, we're all looking forward to. Well myself, my uncle don't really care about my cousin because, you know, he's just walking under the bridge. <laughs> um To turn the tables, do you have any questions for me, even though, you know, like, um, this is supposed to be a Q&A with you, like, asking you questions and answers, like, or getting answers from you, like. No, not that I can think of. Okay, well, moving on then, um, for all of those of you who, uh, haven't heard, um, I'm waiting actually right now for a letter of, uh, admission, um, basically offer me a spot in the broadcasting program here in Welland at Niagara College um, for my hopes actually to get like let's say on radio because in reality sure like why not who doesn't want to hear this guy on the radio but uh, I don't know um, but that's kind of um, basically just my hope like I've been literally like for the last year that I was in school, I was like, you know what, I definitely want to get into broadcasting because, like, I, originally, I wanted to go, you know, become a chef because that's what I was, like, taking in high school. I was, like, getting the uh, red seal that you get on the, the diploma for specialist high skills major. Um, but then, in the last year, I kind of, you know, was like, oh, okay, I want to go do this instead. And then, you know, the guidance counselor is not supposed to tell you that, you know, you shouldn't do this, you should stick with this. Like, they should be, you know, supportive and stuff like that. Like, of course, I know, I've heard from numerous people that broadcasting is definitely going to be tough. I've had a few friends that have taken broadcasting, and it hasn't been easy for them. I understand that. But I will, like, you know, work my ass off uh, to get where I need to be. Like, I know, you know, it's not going to be... Um, and I know, like, getting into college, it's not going to be right away, bam, snap of a finger, getting a job. No, like, I know I might have to work, like, jobs that I don't like, like, doing cleaning somewhere or, like, what have you. Like, it's not going to be, oh, like, here, do you want a job with, uh, let's say, TV Kojiko or, like, Giant FM or, like, you know, I have to work for that. And obviously doing volunteer work and placements will probably help me, you know, a little bit more, but, uh, that will be further down the road. Moving on, uh, we're going to talk about a YouTube series that you started back in 2012, which we are now doing a reunion season for. Uh, 
Detrone story, uh, short form DTWS. So if you hear us talking about DTWS, um, that's what we're talking about. Uh, Ten episodes. We already have episode one up on YouTube. Um, bringing the band back together. You got myself. You got yourself as D Rider. Myself, known as the Big R. Um, we got Matthew Daniluk, also known as MD Shady. We got Nick Pru, also known as the Bacon Pimp, and um, a few other cast members, which um, we haven't done all the filming yet for like all the episodes, which we will continue because we took a hiatus due to winter and uh, the weather conditions haven't been really nice to film in. So, um, yeah. Um, DTWS reunion. Do you have anything to uh, add on to that topic of the DTWS reunion? No. No? Um, okay, kind of a little thing. Anyways, uh, to summarize uh, what DTWS is, and as I'm looking uh, over my shoulder at Dylan's phone, because I've seen a picture of a guy that kind of looks somewhat like me in a way. Uh, kind of looks like. You're talking um, about the guy, that, uh, this guy? Yeah, America's Got <clears throat> Talent. Um, that photo that you were showing me. But, um, the guy that does <clears throat> does a cover of All Star, the Shrek song. Oh, yeah. But it's uh, it's different instrumental music. Okay. Like, he can do All Star with, uh, like, one of the, like, pumped up kicks uh, instrumental. True. And he does it in the rhythm of that. Okay. Um, so yeah, Dietro One Story was a uh, YouTube or yeah, uh, YouTube, a uh, entertainment-based uh, program. But started out with for like the first what twenty episodes, and then we decided to take it over to uh, YouTube Wrestling, which uh, now that you're a pro wrestler. Uh, that isn't happening anymore, obviously. So that's why for this reunion season, we're back to strictly just doing, you know, entertainment-wise uh, spoofs of different TV shows. Um, speaking of which, question to you about that. Um, so now that my cousin and I are not on talking terms, what are we going to do for that whole, like, segment that, like, I don't know. This is an example of Barabi breaking kayfabe. Yeah. <laughs> well. Wow. <laughs> he broke kayfabe on the podcast. He just went shoot. <laughs> wow. I apologize. But, uh... Yeah. No. The fact is, is that you guys are going to get along in the next, like, month or so. Prediction. You you would think. No, that it's it always happens. You've had worse arguments probably than the one you've had right now. Thinking about that, I'm actually not too sure, but um. Anyways, go, go we gotta, we gotta whatever. Speed this up. No one wants to hear yeah whatever you were saying. I'm sitting here for 38. I'll go shoot now. I've been sitting here for 38 minutes, and you're talking about this and that, and I'm nearly falling asleep right now. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. I've got to get going soon anyway. So we're going to speed this up. Uh, I was able to go finally to a Tribune basketball tournament, Constellation uh, Finals and actual finals. And uh, I showed up during the um, second quarter to the Constellation Finals, and that was between E.L. Crosley Cyclones versus the Dennis Morris Reds. Um, so I'll just run down the scores. Uh, Crosley... Uh, was leading 28-26 at halftime. Uh, they were leading 47-39 to after three quarters. And the final score, obviously, Crosley winning 64-59. to uh, So they won the Constellation Championship Finals. And then, during the finals, it was, you know, the Battle of Welland. We have Centennial Cougars versus Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Obviously, you don't care about this topic, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, anyway, so the first quarter started out with Notre Dame, like, uh, being outscored 8 nothing. uh, took them four minutes, roughly, to get on the scoreboard, and the beginning of the first quarter, uh, 
it was 15-7 for Notre Dame after one quarter at halftime, 35-18. Um, half, like I said, 48-38 uh, Notre Dame after three quarters. And the three balls were coming alive in the fourth quarter. But Dame pulled out the victory with 68-60 to to win the trophy, to win the whole Tribune term. I, you know... I was uh, cheering for Centennial due to the fact that my one friend actually plays well. He's a junior, but uh, he got called up just so they have, like, you know, most people on the roster just for, like, the reserves. But, um, yeah, you know, Dylan, you're not really a sports guy, so honestly, like, you know, don't really have to care about that. So, obviously, you're still falling asleep here, basically, so to speak. But anyways... That's all the time we have for this podcast. It's been 41 minutes of me completely talking about, you know, shenanigans other than the fact that, like, some topics we, you know, talked about NWX, WWE. Um, but, yeah, we had a QA. and uh, This is the closing of the first installment of the podcast with my special guest, Dylan Coros. I want to thank you again for taking the time to be on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Dylan Yanni. Yeah. Tired as... Tired as heck. I want to watch my last... I might just, like, jam on my guitar. Yeah. Um, One of the two. And this is also a set, our, our part where we have announcements, which obviously you already announced. One being the fact that uh, February for uh, NWX, you versus Adam Jeffrey. Uh, do you have any more announcements before we, you know? No, just the fact that next time you can see me wrestle is Saturday, February 11th. Doors open, 6.30. Uh, bell time at seven. Okay. Um, tickets are fifteen dollars front row, ten dollars general admission. The only match now so far is myself versus Adam Jeffrey, okay. and I will lay a beating on him like I've never done to anyone before. <laughs> Good man. Um, the only other announcement that I have. Um, my next podcast will be in two weeks. Uh, date to be determined, obviously. Uh. I think it'll be Tuesday uh, that I'll try and get, like, all the, I don't know, maybe Wednesday. I can't remember. But my next guest, uh, he works and stuff like that, so it's kind of hard. And plus, like, he's dealing with uh, exams currently at the moment. They started today for Eastdale. So, I don't know. Dylan, do you know who my second special guest is? Do you have any idea who I'm talking about? I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, we call him Twigs or Twiggy Armed Alien Man or like T. Griffs because, you know, that's basically who I'm talking about is Tristan Griffiths. Uh, um, to be honest, uh, one of the worst joke tellers ever and I keep telling him that he should have Mr. Oroz write his jokes because you know Tristan told me a joke that Oroz said and uh, it was actually funny so that's why I mentioned to Tristan that he uh, Mr. Oroz should write the jokes for Tristan to use on the announcements but uh don't worry he's still students you'll only have to put it up with him for another semester on the announcements so no more crappy jokes uh I'm I'm Deeply sorry, Tristan, but your jokes are not funny. Uh, even though you get a laugh from Miss Lotherington. Uh, actually, no, because Miss Lotherington's gone, I believe. But you have a new uh, principal named Miss Sargent or something like that, so... I don't know it. No, if anything, Dylan also needs to write your jokes, because Dylan is a... Extremely funny guy. Yeah, and I'm not good at jokes. No, but you do refer to yourself as the goat because I am the goat you are things like the greatest of all time of best friends because you are in my top like three best friends. Of course, unfortunately, like how do you feel? How do you feel about Shelby? You know, top on that list. Top of the list of what? Best friends that I have. You know, there's Shelby, there's you, and then there's Matthew. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, at least you made the top three, so anyways. But anyways, that's all the time we have. I got to head on out. Uh, uh, thank you guys for tuning in to this first installment of the podcast. Um, just a little quick recap. We talked about WWE, uh, NWX, NFL, had a Q&A segment with Dylan. 
talked about the DTWS reunion, the Tribune Tourney, finals and constellation finals, and then um, that's just a closing and announcement. So take care. I will be back uh, with a, the second installment in two weeks, and uh, I'll let you know Dylan take it away with the closing. No, I don't know what to say. Okay, well, thank you for being here. Thanks for listening. We're out of here.